Okay, we'll call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. This is a joint meeting of uh, select boards with the fire department, the annual meeting in, in August to talk about the uh, last year's business and what's going on now. Um, the chief wants to do his chief's report first because he's got to leave. So he will take over and do his chief's report. So I appreciate everybody coming tonight. I haven't taken a, a vacation more than two days in the past 27 years. So I took a vacation. I had booked it, I'm up near the Canadian border, but I felt this meeting important to come back to and share what I have uh, for the Chief's report. And then Toby and Paul, uh, as the Vice President President, will go through the financials. And any questions that you have for me, uh, we can answer those as I give the report. You'll find that my style is different than the previous Chief. I'm not long-winded, I'm to the point. Uh, but if you don't understand something, please ask me and I'll explain it very clearly. Whether it takes once, twice, three or four times that you have everything going. So what you have in front of you is the financials. It's Toby, Sandy's a board of directors member, Paul's board of directors, Judy's treasurer. Uh, we've got two or three other board of directors people, which I thought would be here tonight, but evidently it's, it's August and it's a night where they couldn't be in. So. What I'd like to start with is uh, just the COVID issue, why we asked you to mask up. Uh, Toby is the president of the organization. He simply asked that he not stay in a room for more than 10 minutes because of the BA5 variant that's out there. We're transporting people that have no symptoms, but we get a call from the hospital on a regular basis, almost on a daily basis, saying that they're COVID positive. So when we do go out on ambulance calls, everybody's wearing an N95, a high-end N95, wearing goggles, wearing gloves, and the ambulance is sanitized beyond your imagination when we at the hospital uh, to disinfect, to clean, so that we don't transmit that onto a future patient. So we're taking every precaution that we can possibly we take. Use spray. We use a spray, we use, we use the hospital su supplies us with the disinfectant that they've approved for COVID mm -hmm. contamination. And I think most of you are aware of the COVID issues. Even the President of the United States, he was double boosted, double vaccinated, still had COVID twice, had a rebound. Uh, I think you probably, everybody sitting here knows someone that's had it once or twice or, or whatever. Yeah. Hopefully the vaccines prevent all of us from getting a serious illness. So that's what the goal was there, but I'm going to honor Toby's request of what we're doing tonight here. You, you know, I appreciate what you folks are doing here. So what I'm going to quickly do is just go over a few items. Um, in the past two or three weeks here, we've had three structure fires. Uh, Callis has had a couple of fires and we've gone up to Woodbury for coverage. And so there's, for some reason, all of a sudden, we wound up with something that we don't see very often is a structure fire. I'm so surprised this time of year. At this time of year too, with nobody burning wood and everything right. else. And, and those, they were, they, when they investigated them, they found various sources that caused the fires to happen. On the last one up in Route 14, Callis, the gentleman was injured with burns to the face, the hands and so forth. Our ambulance transported the patient out. Paul will discuss those in a little bit, but uh, the reason I bring up fire calls during the day or at any time is a staffing issue. So the staffing for East Montpelier Fire, for Woodbury Fire, and for all the departments around us is critical. I think if you've watched the news in the past two weeks, Channel 3 is running all kinds of things about recruitment, retention, short-handed firefighters. You just can't find people for EMS and for fire. So we're, we face the same problems here. Uh, we've been relying on, like tonight, we have one person, one paramedic on duty here and Sandy is the driver. And so normally if I was back in the area, I would be the second person when we can't find the two people crew requirement. So that's an ongoing daily type thing. So we rely on mutual aid and we're going to really emphasize retention and recruitment. 
And this is something that I want to bring up to the select boards because you're going to hear a lot about this. And we're going to be asking the select boards to be proactive in developing something as other departments are developing, other towns all around us. Sandy will address that in a little bit about some of the programs, some of the plans, some of the things that the state of Vermont is recommending, some of the things the state of Vermont is doing. So recruitment, retention, um, I think everyone here is aware that even to hire people into a restaurant, you can't find people. I was up at, in the Canadian border there and we wanted to go to a restaurant and they were only open from 11 to 1 and 4 to 7. And it's a big, big restaurant. And they're only open six hours and they said they just don't have a stuff. Yeah, it's a problem everywhere. Everywhere, every industry, everything else. So it's even much more prevalent in the fire and EMS service than ambulance services. Even the full-time services such as Barry Town, Barry City, and Montpelier have trouble with callbacks. So if you listen to a scanner, you'll hear mutual aid responding on a regular basis. Today we had a call up in on the Groton line and um, we had our ambulance went out with only one paramedic on board because we had nobody to cover the day shift. And mutual aid came in from uh, Barrytown. So mutual aid, they do come, but it's a delayed response. So my goal as chief is to really build and aggressively go after recruitment retention and to bring people on. Over the past couple of years, we've lost a number of people here due to various aspects of the way the organization was run. That has changed. In the last two days, I get calls from two paramedics that are coming back. So we'll have two more paramedics that'll sign up for shifts, which greatly will help us. A third paramedic locally who left is also returned. And he, he was uh, a great help. He is the District 6 training coordinator. He's the highest trained paramedic in this district. He now works for us and he's working eight or nine shifts a month, which before he totally left. Uh, so he, it's really good news for, this, for the community, for each one of us, for me especially, for anybody that you don't know when you're going to need the ambulance. This ambulance saved my life two years ago. I, I died in the ambulance. I was defibrillated four times. I wound up having one stint placed in Burlington. And since the two years ago, I 100% clean bill of health. Uh, no damage to my heart or anything else. My function is uh, 85 to 90%, which she said was better than it was before. So I owe my life to the crew. I was training and working with on East Montpelier Fire Department. So an overview of what's going on here in the department for the past year. We still continue to train and you see the schedule on the board here. So every Tuesday night, there's a bigger group coming back than there was in the previous year. And when I say that, that means for trainings, uh, we had a training here for MCI mass casualty training. And normally on a, a year ago, we'd have six, seven people. We have 25 people here on this training. So people want to come back, they want to train. There's a different look to what we're presenting here. And that's what I want to emphasize. Um, what we're looking for is in the past year, you have the report in front of you. I have it electronically. We've responded to about 733 calls. So the call volume is up in, in the last year. You have it, it might be on the last couple of pages. Is it's that just the EMS or is that fire? EMS and fire combined. Uh, and for the, like a six month period, you have 389 calls or so, then you have 356 total calls for the month. But we're averaging about 60 calls a month, which is a couple calls a day. So for a little department, we're covering the four towns and 99% of the time we have crews covering those ambulance response. Fire were the same as Plainfield, Marshfield, and Cabot. If you hear a call for a structure fire in any one of those three towns, or you hear a call for even a mute, even a car accident, all three departments are toned at the same time because they can only expect two or three people from each department to respond. I wondered how that worked. I asked Chance, because somebody asked me, how does that work? How do you know that you need to go to an event in 
Cabot? How do you know that, you know, how does Woodbury know to yeah. come and assist an East Montclair? How, how does that so work? So the dispatcher, Capital West Dispatch, dispatches all the towns in this district. They dispatch Cabot, Plainfield, Marshfield, East Montpelier, Woodbury, all the surrounding towns. There's 25 or 30 towns that are dispatched out of one dispatch center, Capital West. So when we have a structure fire like we had up in Callis, immediately Woodbury and East Montpelier are dispatched. And if Paul was the senior officer on the scene or when the call went out, he immediately strikes with Capital West what's called a second alarm. Second alarm immediately alerts Capital West to pull out a run card and it says we want Barry City, an engine, Barry Town, engine and a tanker. We want Montpelier with an engine. We want Worcester with an engine. So on that initial tone, we're getting seven or eight or nine departments. How do you know which ones to ask? I mean, how do you know that you need them? Well, if it's a, if we get a call right now, and it was in Callis for a house on fire. As soon as we understand that there's flame showing or smoke showing, we pull the alarm. We pull a second alarm and we pull a tanker task force. So the second alarm brings in probably six or seven departments. It brings in 10 or 12 pieces of equipment. All of the, we're looking for the manpower. The NFPA guidelines say you must have 18 men on scene within the first 10 minutes. Only way we can do that is to aggressively push people in here. A tanker task force is called immediately in five tanker units carrying anywhere from a thousand to two or to three thousand gallons of water is dispatched at the same time. So at the structure fire on Route 14 in Callis, as soon as that call was initiated, there was probably 10 or 11 departments toned, and there was probably 15 pieces of equipment running in that direction. They know the location, they know what's happening, and then when it came in as a person that was burned, the ambulance was dispatched automatically on the first tone. So our response is the first tone, we need to get 15, 16 people coming with apparatus because number one, it's such a hot day, heat exhaustion, they transported the firefighter out of that for heat exhaustion. Number two, <coughs> we just need the water source, the manpower, because up there the water source was just up the road on the Moscow <coughs> Woods. It was a dry hydrant. We had all the water we wanted, but you got to get it from there to the fire. So when we have these calls to overcome the situation of shortage of manpower in the station, we have to pull a, a big mutual aid attack. So the communities of East Montpelier, Callis, that we cover, we aggressively protect with the mutual aid system. In turn, when they get a call, we respond to them. And it's a mutual aid agreement all the way through. So unless we had a full-time department, and what we're seeing with the full-time department's fire side, even Barry and Montpelier don't have enough manpower. They have three to five people on duty on a shift and when that truck goes out and they get a second ambulance call or a call behind it, they call mutual aid. So no matter what you do, if you want to pay a million dollars to have people sitting here, you're still going to call mutual aid on the calls. So we're fortunate to be able to do that. Any questions on that aspect of it? No, thanks for explaining. Okay. The, uh, So for many years on this department, the age to drive a fire truck or an ambulance was 21 years of age. And that was just a preference that the department, the board of directors set up. Our insurance allows us to have people covered at age 18, 18, 19, 20. So we looked at the departments I did around us. I talked to Barry Town, I talked to Woodbury, I talked to all of the volunteer departments around us and I said, how old can an individual be to join your department and serve in the fire or EMS side? And they all said 18. Now, do we let an 18 year old drive a 45,000 pound fire truck that's 35 feet long and 
loaded with expensive equipment that costs three quarters of a million dollars to replace it? No. We go through a, a real rigorous training program. And the training program is set up through the state and it's also set up for in-house work. So on this department, we're reviewing that right now, but you would not see an 18 year old driving a fire truck. You would see them maybe driving an ambulance, but not a fire truck. As they achieve uh, uh, capabilities, maturity, and are okayed by the department through the training offices and through the SOGs, the standard operating guidelines that we put in place, and we feel they're good, we would utilize them. And I'll give you an, an example, Thomas Parker. You may know Thomas, his father was Todd, he's a firefighter here, Todd was a firefighter. His grandfather was killed in the line, or died in the line of duty in East Montpelier. He died at a fire down at the carpet burn and uh, died of a heart attack out back of the building. And ever since that, his family had donated a, a special pass device that all firefighters wear. If you stop moving for 25 or 30 seconds, the alarm alerts. When uh, Deputy Chief Parker died, he went to search the back of the building, looked, had a heart attack, felt nobody knew he was there. So uh, that was something we learned from that. But his grandson joined this department when he was probably 15 years old. Came with his dad every all the time. When he was 18 and 19, he actually achieved a CDL license to drive trailer trucks but he couldn't drive a fire truck here because the rule was 21. He was higher trained than anybody on this department as far as credentialed, but he couldn't drive a truck. And I thought that was, and he's the most, one of the most mature young men you'll ever see. He's 22 now and he, he's, he is the truck officer that maintains all of the fire apparatus and ambulance for this department. He has a degree in diesel mechanics. He's a certified diesel mechanic and he's 22, 23 years of age. So that's the kind of guy we're looking for. So we're looking at the schools around us, uh, and Paul will speak to it. His grandson is taking his only 18? 17 right now. 17, and what kind of a course is he enrolled in? Uh, he's going to be starting in September a paramedic course at the Vocational Center in Barrie. So at a age paramedic. 17, he's going to be starting a paramedic course. Don't you think we want to go after him? I do. I want guys that are seven. I need someone to take my place. I want 17, 18, 19 year old guys that I can relay my experience and training to and get them to take, take up. So <laughs> you're going to hear in the future of a promotional material on radio, TV, newspapers, interviews, same thing Williston does. Williston does it all the time. Or Winooski does it also, I think too. We're going to be aggressively going after 18 to 20 year olds that are graduating from Vermont Tech as EMTs, AEMTs, paramedics, and fire to fire science degrees. Now, where are these people going? They're going to full-time departments, and those full-time departments are happy to see them come in. So we're aggressively going to look at how many of those people we can find that would come and help East Montpelier fire out. So we're developing a training program that they would go through to make that happen. Um, we're also looking at recruitment and retention. I talked about recruiting the younger generation out there. And this idea was brought up to us by a new member on the board. Alex Bogazuski was a new member, voted in, and his idea was to reach some of these younger generational people, his age bracket or under, and this is the place to reach them. They're in school, they want a job, and in the past couple of weeks, I've been approached by two people that are 19 years of age that are EMTs taking the AEMT course, taking the advanced course. So we're seeing people that want to do this, and I want to have this department open with the proper training, the proper uh, mentoring and education to utilize people of that age bracket and build this department up with younger people. We need to. At the last company meeting we had, or the last annual meeting, we had 23 people here, and I think they figured the average age was in the late 50s, something like that, and even older 
of the men that Nothing are wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But we're an older department and we need to look for people in that younger group. That's the average age of basically uh, municipal workers in the state of Vermont and in Maine. Yeah. So they're pretty they're much 55. In, they're going to retire in 10 years or less. Right. Yep. And fire service, it's a more difficult thing. Actively in the department, we have maybe 10 or 15 members that are really active and another group that's semi-active. So we're trying to build and strengthen this department. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, when you have people that you're working with um, doing training and they're not from around here, where do you have them stay? So we, ha we don't, I mean, anybody, the majority of our people on ambulance stuff don't live in this area. They don't live in East Montpelier. Right. I think the only ones that live here is Ty, myself, uh, Paul on the fire side, Sandy. There's not a lot. A lot of people live out that are full-time people. So if we're going to bring these young guys in that live in the community, we're going to say to them, we can offer you a job in the future for Diem at this point in time, but we can offer you a number of hours to get your foot wet, we can train you, get you working, and hopefully retain you down the road. My brain's just going, you know how when they have the baseball players come yeah, and they, they say, they would you sponsor one of them to stay in your home for, you know, two months or six weeks or whatever it is, you know, maybe there's people in the communities. Well, a lot of these young men and women that would be coming in here live within the traveling distance of their station. So they would, like right now we have people that live in Washington, we have people that live down in Corinth, we have people that live in Montpelier, you know, all around the area that come here, Plainfield, Marshfield. Uh, so we're looking at people that live in the area. We don't want them to leave the area. We don't want to lose these young people to something in Burlington or something else. And Burlington Fire hires on a daily basis. They're looking for people all the time, as is the other departments. Um, I have a question. You know, my daughter, she just got her EMT certification yes. last month. Yeah. She's a goofy M, yeah. pre med, but she's, you know, that, and I, is that the kind of thing during the, during the year she's going to be doing with working with their EMT yeah. volunteer squad, but then during the summers, is that the kind of, or if she's here? We'd love to have her come down as a per DM member. Would she pick up? And she would come in and we would start to do a training program. Yeah, yeah, we would do a training program with her as far as familiarization of what we do and how we do it. And uh, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. If they can help us out for three months, four months, five months, two months, as they're doing that. At UVM, there's a program up there with, with St. Mike's, and a lot of those pre-med students that are involved in that work yeah. at St. Mike's. And they work, if they can work three hours a, a day or six hours, they use them. That'd be a good promotional. It is. I know she's working on getting other young people going in it too. So exactly. That's, that's the that's kind of people we need. Yeah, I mean, that would be good by all means. You know, we would utilize her. She said I could work two days a month or two shifts a month. Get okay. the experience. She's got to get the experience somewhere in that. And she goes on to her full time big career. But if she wants the experience as an EMT, yeah. we do that now. We have people well, that work two shifts a month, three shifts a month. And we train and utilize them. They fill a shift for us. Um, so we're going to be working on that in the future. We're also, Paul will discuss this a little bit, the uh, average AEMT, EMT, AEMT paramedic wage scale needs to be adjusted. We've looked at that over the last 10 years and it hasn't really been adjusted to meet the competition in the area. So we're going to look at that and the board will discuss that as something for the next fiscal year to try to make it competitive with the market out there. And some of the towns were more than competitive and some of the other ones were not quite competitive. So in order for us to bring somebody in here, we've got to be at a competitive rate. So we're looking, that'll be presented by the board back to the select board in the next budget as it comes up there'll be something in there for an increase in wages because everybody here is no benefit package and we're going to be looking at that how we can enhance that a little bit uh, and we see it happening all around us in new york state it's happening on a regular basis you see it on channel three channel five of the things they're doing 
big recruitment push towards young women. Big recruitment push towards young women. We have four or five or six women on our department, and three of them right now are enrolled in the advanced EMT, AEMT course. So we have a couple, I think one that's in a paramedic course. So we're looking for that generation, but what, uh, New York has pushed, it was on channel three or channel five, a real push to hire women in fire and EMS. So I would like to see in the future women in the officer corps here. That's the goal, is to train good women. Water area has women in the officer corps. Other departments around us, Berlin, I think, or there's other departments that do that. And women are more than welcome and, and highly trained and very good at what they do. Barrytown Ambulance says the majority, probably their paramedics are, are, are young women. So we're are you pushing that goal too. That's a source we need to take a look at here. We haven't done that in years past. So we want to encourage that to happen. Um, any other questions overall on what we're doing? We're trying to build a stronger morale here. We're trying to build a, a cohesive group of men and women doing, having a goal to move forward and have uh, a community service that provides what select boards and the town expects. <coughs> We've got a lot of really good people here. Uh, Toby does an excellent job on presenting financial reports. Uh, former Chief Ty Rowland has done an excellent job building the department in the past years, but we made a change and we want to move forward. I'm just looking for cooperation amongst the men and women here to move that change forward. And I'm open to suggestions to try things, not try things, and see how it works. I don't run any kind of a forced hand, hot hand, hand on your head type environment. It's open. It's a real open environment. You get a, you get a suggestion, let's try it. Let's put it in place. And I indicated to all the officers here, there's times when I won't be here. So you need to be trained up to handle the department. And that's happened in the past couple of weeks. I've been on vacation and I've been 78 miles away at times up right on the Derby line, right at the Canadian border and beyond. And so when they had structure fires, by the time I got back here, it'd be an hour and a half, two hours into it. But I know that the department is in good hands. The men and women that are working here will do their absolute best each time the call goes out. And they'll do their absolute best to work with the towns, Calisey, Montpelier, Plainfield, Marshfield, to provide the best possible uh, treatment and service that we possibly can supply. So any other questions or thoughts for me on this? It sounds like we really need to be helpful for us in reaching out and in the communities, in our community. This is just, just getting word out there that hey, you know, we really need this folks and you who can stand up and who is interested. It's it's something this, that, you know, you we've got a little sign up front and there's a little bit of face Facebook type activity, but we're gonna that's gonna be promoted very strongly in the near future. I wanna be ahead of the other departments in our area. I wanna be ahead of the group that is picking up these people because they're they're out there. Mm -hmm. And like your daughter is a prime example and she is her career path is taking her to be a physician or to be something else. Everybody at that UVM, they, they seem like they're all EMTs. They go to St. Mike's or they go to another place. They come home for a couple of months and they want to do something. Yeah, really We're so happy to have that type of individual come down and train them. They get the experience. It's going to help them in their field and it helps us in what we're doing here. Well, okay. by all means, I'd be more than happy to have her come down and make an application out. We put that process and see if she can come in and train and and uh, help us grow. So that's what we're looking Great. for. Good. I mean, she comes in a fair amount during the year too. So, I mean, even some weekends. Well, that's exactly what we're looking really for. Weekends are a big deal for us to get somebody here for Saturday, yeah. Sunday, and keep them here uh, on a regular basis to come in and work two shifts, three shifts, eight hour shifts, you know, things like that. So we, we would appreciate that very much. So that's kind of a general overview. There's many other things, but I don't want to take a lot of time with it. I wanted to take about 30 minutes, which I did. And um, does anybody have any questions? Any comments or anything that I can help you with further? You know, by all means, if 
Well, you, can, me, if you can think of ways for us to help promote. Yeah, you know, we're going to get a list of things very soon. Yeah, our last board meeting was was cut short because we had a critical ambulance call at the time. We lost one of our former members. Oh no! And uh, Steri Lino. Oh, I heard of I think a lot of you know Steri oh, Callis. Just, yeah. So we were yeah. in a board Junior. meeting. Junior, Junior, right? not Junior. Not Junior. Yeah, sorry, Junior. 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 Yeah. I forgot I Terry was Senior was there yeah. and Junior. <clears throat> so former members, uh, you know, we do everything we can. But we were at that meeting we were discussing some things to present to the select boards, even at this meeting, or put it in writing and submit it. That will be forthcoming as to some of the plans we're looking for for recruitment retention. And Sandy will briefly talk touch on that. But if there's no other questions for me, I've got a two hour drive. No you are dismissed. Yeah. Have a good it. time. And I really appreciate each one of you coming out tonight. And thank you for wearing a mask. We want to make this comfortable for uh, everybody that's in here. Thank you. For thank you. Yeah, thank, so you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Have a nice really trip good. up Enjoy the there. rest of your vacation. It yeah. ends yeah. Sunday, so I'll be back. I work five days next week. Ah, so I'll be back. got to make up for lost time, huh? I think so. But Toby will take over and, and start the rest of it. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Thank you, Larry. Okay, you've all studied the financials. You all have your questions ready for me? I did study them. Good. Fire away. Um, so page one is the balance sheet. Essentially shows you where we started last before last year and where we finished up this year. Uh, things of note: We replenished the contingency account to 31. Th we added 31,000 to it, so that was monies that we earned to replace that contingency fund. We've made, uh, we've increased the capital account by $52,000, and the checking account is $12,000 more. That's just a timing thing. It's not necessarily has any relationship to assets. It's just the point in time. It's got $12,000 more. Uh, that's the balance sheet, so it gives you an idea what's there. So page two is the budget versus actual on the ambulance. Um, so we came in $7,000 under budget on the ambulance side. What's the set? Expenses. $7,067 under budget. Yep. <coughs> Um, and on the second page of page two, uh, you can see that the insurance revenue was $158,000. That's actually down from last year where we made $164,000. Okay, the other thing to note is the COVID vaccination down below at the bottom of that page. We brought in $213,000, paid out $124,000, uh, $12,000 for tax, $7,000 for uh, workers' comp. So essentially, we're ahead by 70, roughly $70,000 in, in this particular yeah, fiscal year. Yeah. It means that we collected more money than we expended. Yeah. Did you, yeah, were the, the insurance collections are down, where the, the calls were up though, correct? We, yeah, but again, the percentage of Medicare, Medicaid calls depends on what that function yeah, is. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's all that. Yeah. So if you have more Medicare, Medicaid calls, you're going to get less revenue. And right. some of it's right. timing, too. And some of it's timing when it's reported. Mm -hmm. So we're up 60, well, we're up 70,000 on the vaccine. Uh, COVID this year, last year we were $20,000 under, so essentially we really only got roughly $50,000 in pocket, and I just did an accounting of the payments that we got from the state, and they double paid, I think, three invoices, so that number is is, uh, it is not correct, so we'll have to fix that. So I think the total vaccination contract over the two-year period is a gain of about $20,000 that we had over above expenses. Right, and most of, and most of that is because we paid essentially the state offered us seventy dollars an hour to pay people and we only paid them fifty and we took some of that money to run the building and do other stuff so that's some of that that's why there's this bonus yeah, yeah. in here yeah 
Okay. Any other questions on ambulance? Okay, if you go to the first page three, that's the budget versus actual on the fire side. Um, if you look on the second part of page three, you can see that we were $22,000 over budget. Okay, so there are a couple of factors. So one of them is building two, which we're in. And we had a couple of issues here in this building. Uh, the pump, the, war, the well pump died. It cost us $5,000, uh, $5,500 to replace. We recoded the, the driveway out here for $2,500. Uh, we had a new a new company come in to do all of our life safety stuff, which is fire extinguishers and alarms and all that kind of stuff. So that was something that we hadn't hadn't done before, and that was another roughly two thousand. So most of that is stuff that's just individual items. And also, diesel is way up for everybody. Right. Um, we also replaced a lot of the lights. So when we first moved in here, um, Vermont Efficiency put in compact <coughs> lights. So we've replaced all the bulbs and the, the light fixtures with LEDs now. So the electricity should go down a little bit, and that was a that was an expense on this particular building. Was it? The, I thought the painting was covered under the excess leftover from a. Uh, yeah, but we didn't receive it in this year. Oh, I see. We didn't get the payment from the town this year, okay. so it, would, it will show up as a payment. Just as a liability. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that pretty much covers the building, firefighter supplies. That line item is a little bit up because we had to replace a lot of equipment. There is one line item in there. We bought new pagers that should have been in a different line item. That doesn't change the 22,000, but it changes the firefighting supply number to be offset a little bit. So it's not as much over as it, it appears. The pagers were like $4,500 and that should go to a capital expense. So that, that ended up in there, and it will change that. So it, essentially, we're probably 15000 over in uh, fire, so fire what actual. Is, what is 5360 stipend matching fund? It's got That's a the zero. stipend we pay everybody. It's, 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 we do that every year. OK, yeah, because it says zero, so. Well, so we had to change that line item because it's paid out of payroll, so it's, oh, it's in. Okay. So the line is still there with zero, but if you look a little bit lower, you'll see salary stipend. Yeah, well, that was going to be my next question. And is this so that's essentially a new... just moved to a different line? Out. Okay, so you just created a new. Because okay. we have to take taxes out, which wasn't being accounted for on the on the other line. Okay. Any other questions on the fire budget? You don't talk about the well. Huh? You don't talk about the well. The yeah. Well, the new well we have put in. Yeah, the pump. I did. Yeah, the new pump. pump. Yeah. Um, page four is our collection rate. Um, it's the usual discounts versus what we collect. So you can see we actually collected more than we build, which is a great collection rate. Mm -hmm. um, Medicare was 44%, Medicaid 14.8%. So that's just to give give you an idea of how successful we are collecting. Does the other companies like Blue Cross and all that do they pay? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Um, so page five uh, essentially is just a summary of what came in and what went out based on all the reports that we have here. So you can see we almost collected a million dollars. We almost we spent over nine hundred thousand. It's all itemized there by category. So it was a busy year. A lot of money yeah. in, a lot of money out. Any questions on any line item there? Um, Thank you. Yep. Page six is again July to December for each town and category for total calls. And the second page six is January to June. So 
total is over almost 700, over 700 calls altogether. And broken down by town so you can see what the percentage is in your town. That's just how many times we went out for all kind everything. So then you go to the last page, page seven. Again, that's uh, July to December, and the second part of it is January to June. And again, broken down by towns. Uh, so the 169 were the transports in July to December, and 169 was the transports in January, June. Yep, you get called out a lot of times and don't take a patient to the hospital. Any other questions about financials? Great, that's all I have. I just had one thing, I just want to make just a statement. I think that the chief was saying that if, 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 if just the problem went full time, you'd probably have a million dollar budget. I think it'd probably be closer to a million and a half dollar budget because the budget's almost a million dollars now. Well, so the 200, so you're looking at 200,000 that came in this year that- Won't be coming in. Won't be coming in. But and, and again, so right now it's, uh, you know, it's a $430,000 ambulance budget, mm -hmm. okay? And we brought in 158,000 worth of revenue. So that's 600,000 that we can bring to the table, including what we get from the two towns, the four towns, and what we collect. But we're also asking the towns to participate in paying for trucks. So the truck, the 158 is the truck side of things. And if you take that and put it into the, the, the operating budget, which we could do, mm -hmm. now you got to raise that other 150,000 or 100,000 a year right. for the capital side. So it's... It, it, it's, you have to be careful about how you look at what that number is. And if you look at the fire department and you look at the ambulance together, I mean, that's a substantial amount of money. It's a large it's yeah. a large chunk of money. I was just saying that where I was town manager before um, coming here just on the select board, you know, our police department was a million dollars a year. Right. Um, of course, the fire department was a lot less because it was volunteer. So. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, if you look at the the fire budget for the two towns combined, is one hundred and eighty thousand. Yeah, and we've actually stayed pretty level on that yeah. over the years because right. essentially we've managed everything that we need to do, and our fire calls don't don't, you know, we don't see a large increase in fire calls every year. Right, and good. most of that is all volunteer based, yeah. so there's no there's no salary based in that. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Toby. Do you guys, you know, I have a curious, you know, with the climate change issues we're having, and I've seen the night National Weather Service, you know, projections on temperature and then more extended drought areas. Do you guys, are, is there any, do you see any issues around this coming from the near world of, you know, talk to Scott Whitty or people like that at the National Weather Service? No, I mean, drought Drought would mean more brush fire. Yeah. We have maybe one or two brush fires a year right now. So mm -hmm. Vermont is a very green state. It's not a big drought yeah. state. So yeah. our forests, you know, are healthy. And so I don't see that being an issue as far as climate change goes. You know, longer winters or shorter winters, driving issues. I mean, we might go to more motor vehicle accidents, but um, not a significant change because of climate that I can see. We've, I've heard with that man talking, working with that, you know, National Letter Service through our emergency operations side, where, you know, they predict possible, you know, probably increased rainfall, but also in larger, high volume, short duration events, and then increased number and longer droughts. So, we, so we, for the most part, don't get called out to those kind of events, flooding, unless it's unless people are trapped and or. Um, floods, you know, essentially the beaver dam went once and we were called out to that to manage that. 
Um, we haven't been called out to any other because essentially it's a culvert washed away or a couple of roads washed away, but it's not life safety. And so, or property safety that we can handle. I mean, we, you know, in a flood event, we would bring pumps and pump people's basements out or take boats to take people, rescue them from their houses, but we don't, we have not, we only had that one flood event in my 20 years yeah, in the fire department. Event. And we've had lots of other road washouts where the fire department was not involved. Sure, I got you. That's good. That's yeah. good. So, that, so I don't think we're, that's a big effect for us. The, the hurricane we were on duty, yeah. I don't know, Katrina or I'm not sure. Irene. Yeah. Irene. Irene, right? Yeah, we did a lot of running around those two days. Right. Yeah, we were on the road a lot. And that that yeah. was mostly blocking roads yeah. and making sure people yeah. weren't traveling in, in dangerous places. I mean, it wasn't rescue work; it was road management. A couple of rescues. There was one car that was stuck in the mud. There was the mud was moving it, and Larry and someone else. Uh, went, I don't know. Did you go? It was up north of uh, North Montpelier. And by the time they found it, the car was moving in the mud, and uh, they got it out. Did you see a lot of mutual aid calls in that? I think it was certainly in the mud. It's some areas got kind of hit very, very badly. East of the Greens, you know, the Grand When we got called in Montpelier, there were people needed to be rescued uh, yeah. in a trailer park in just yeah, 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 the yeah, lower right. middle section. Yep, I remember we, that. We did get called yeah. for that. Yeah. Again, life safety and or, or property damage. Yeah. Again, in, in my 22 years, two or three events. So I'm not I'm, I'm not losing any sleep over it. That's Thanks. great. I, yeah, I, asked, I asked Scott that. He said he didn't, because of the quality, the characteristics of our forest, they, they weren't super concerned at this point. I mean, looking at the temperature and those rainfall changes, they're, they, they're yeah, he, yeah, he was less concerned than other things. Um, other than that, any other questions? Any other business to bring before the fire department? Great. Um, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. Uh, another year. I was going to discuss something that Larry asked me to touch on. Well, I talked to Larry about it first. And it is the we give out stipends and st for our firefighters, they have to be a member, not uh, per diem people, members. They have to meet criterions. But we're wondering if the town could push for something on the state level or maybe on the town levels to help us for retention and to get members as maybe a kickback on their taxes somehow uh, yeah, or something to say you're a, a resident of Callis or East Montpelier. Uh, you're a volunteer. You got to meet these criterions. You might get a hundred dollar discount off your property tax, something like that. Or approach the state to put in a program. Ask your your representatives something because there's been a lot of talk on recruitment, retention, and something to maybe boost it from a town level to to give a little kickback, whether it's a tax break on. Uh, buying tires for your vehicle or something or tax breaks something I don't know what mm -hmm. just for helping us with recruitment and so retention it would, have to be, it would be um, trained. oh they would have to meet a criterion they'd have to meet special <laughs> guidelines put out by either the state or the town whoever is giving that benefit uh, back to us that they would have to be at so many it's same thing with getting a um, a stipend they have to meet 50 percent of our business meetings and 50 percent of our trainings in order to get a stipend to qualify and then that depends on how many people qualify and how much percentage they qualify mm -hmm. goes from that pool of money mm -hmm. and that's how we divide up the money for stipends not everybody gets stipends in our department some may only show up once or twice a year right. they wouldn't be entitled to a stipend same bases well, would have to. Just for, you don't have to mention names, but how many volunteers are there from Callis that might qualify? For a stipend? No, for this, for some kind of a. Do you have, do you have any idea how many people are in Callis? Well, two? I, maybe two or three, but if it's, it's only two incentive. or three, it's just it it's might an be an it's incentive to yeah. No, I mean, I'm hearing you. Pool. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, it's yeah. worth discussing. Yeah. Can you yeah. keep. 
a running list of these ideas like this for us and just you know we'll, we'll work on this together and yeah some some sort of incentive mm -hmm. to for recruitment and mm -hmm. uh, retention to yeah. have someone say look I'm volunteering but what do I get you know nowadays it's all about the money what am I going to get out of it you know it's not right. like the old days everybody pitching volunteerism is way down mm -hmm. I mean you see it all over all these clubs there's very few people doing all the work there's only small percentage mm -hmm. how about if there's something to give them the mm -hmm. incentive to want to participate more I, I mean I like this idea I mean, yeah. it's not it's worth checking out yeah yep. somewhere something yep. whether you push that idea onto a state level uh, a that, would bit, even, that, that would be even that would be even better because they might be able to do be. more. It, it would be, right. but I I don't know where we can go with it right mm -hmm. now. But I want to put it out there for discussion, and uh, okay. that's what I talked with Larry a little bit about. And he said, "Hey, bring it up at the meeting, see if the towns can do anything mm -hmm. at the, the town levels." Oh, that's <laughs> quite possible. It's worth it's talking about. For us, yeah, yeah, we can work on the legislators too. But that's yeah. something we can. Possibly we already have a, a veterans discount. You in know, town and you, you get the yeah. voters to approve that right so, sure. you could so it'd be similar you could do the that. same thing you could just right. have a yeah. special special discount on taxes for volunteers well and the, the, the state has a certain amount <coughs> for veterans callus does more than what adds it yeah, adds yeah, more yeah. onto we do more for the veterans in callus yeah. Right. Than so, what the state so you does, already, but it's similar. you already can do it at a local level. You're already doing it at the yeah. local level. Yeah. yeah. You can just yeah. need to. I mean, basically, you do it for landowners that keep their land open and stuff like that. Right. We're looking at the same thing, keeping the volunteers active. Something like that. Basically, acknowledge their acknowledging that. Maybe they could do that for select board members. <laughs> Maybe you get too This big. is our third meeting. Maybe you get paid too much. I don't know. Let's start with it. Let's start with the <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, I, I, just, but it, it know, would be similar to veterans. Yeah. It's worth talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I have one quick question. You guys um, took the loan out for the 66000 What are you doing with the proceeds? Are you putting it in a reserve account? Well, that is an issue. Um, we don't have a treasurer currently. We're going back out to recruitment. We worked hard to recruit. We had somebody that had accepted the job. Anyways, long story short, we don't have a treasurer, so we don't have anybody to sign the loan paperwork. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with the town's attorney to see how we can get around that issue. So. Um, well, there's no rush. I'm just, I saw that you had voted to approve the right. loan. I just want to make sure that when you get the proceeds, you put it in the fire department reserve fund so it stays in one place where you're where no right. This is our portion of the new of truck. The new truck. Right. When is it, the when it could be a year from now? It all depends on construction. Okay, because so. our the town attorney asked me to ask you for a debt schedule. Do you have that? Uh, uh, we I don't think we're at that stage. You're not at that stage. Okay. I don't think. Right. No. We yeah, he had that. that. He asked me to ask that question and. Another one, and that's why I asked you for your phone number. I was going to call you because um, he had two questions he wanted me to ask, and yeah. I can't remember the other so one. So we've talked. We've talked to the credit union, and they're all set, but they haven't determined anything because if the truck's not delivered for a year and a half, that schedule right. won't be built till then. Right. So we have time. Yeah, but all I'm saying is that you signed the document, and it's going to be happening, and you're going to have the monies before the truck arrives. I, I hope so. Want, Make sure, yeah, it's not going to be a year away, we hope. But anyway, right. just make sure that you put it in the reserve fund so it sits there untouched. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because East Montpelier has their capital fund and it's already there ready to go at, at a moment's notice. Right. So that's where we're at. I'm working on it. Hopefully, we get a treasurer hired. Yeah. If you know anybody, send them our way. Okay. Well, that's it. So thank you all for coming. And, oh, you didn't uh, have anything? Yeah. Well, Larry, Larry asked me just to uh, briefly, briefly talk about the two fires that we had, uh, which he already mentioned quite a bit of it already. Um, but Larry, uh, since he's become chief, he's missed all, all of that. He wasn't here for either one of them. He was mm -hmm. away on vacation. Um, but he, he uh, mentioned about the, and you had brought up about the, um, the multiple fire departments coming in mm -hmm. and how, how that gets started. Uh, Barry City ha has a has a good system where their dispatch, uh, not Capital West, Barry City dispatch, when they get a call into their dispatch about a fire in a building or smoke in a building, they have the option as a dispatch to automatically tone 
several departments all at once. The fire department doesn't have to call for that second alarm. The dispatch can do it themselves. Wow. So they can they can tone, I don't know, what is it, six, six departments all at once, even before Barry City even leaves the station. So, but in our case, uh, like it would tie the other day when he was, when we were headed to the county road, he actually made the call to go to a second alarm and to call Montpelier, uh, Worcester, Barrytown. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we actually manually tell Capital West to yes. call these other departments it's in. It's interesting, Cal's has had two fires in like two a, weeks, right? A week. A week. Yeah, in the same week, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's so that's a little different. Barry City, is, uh, obviously, they have the, the, um, the dispatch center in but they, they cannot, their, theirs is automatic. And ours is that we tell Capital West to go to a second alarm and, and we can. Uh, okay, so like when the ha- fire happened on Route 14, somebody called 911. Yeah. And then. And then we, and then we started to respond. So, but, but before that, how did you get a call from Capital West? Capital West will tell them Cap- East Montpelier and, and Woodbury. At the Those same are time. the two departments that are told first. Right. Whoever is going to be in command, either Ty or Paul Cerruti, uh, whoever's going to be in command, they would they would go to the next step and, and ask for other departments. Because they know they don't have enough people in right. the house. Exactly. Because right. what, Larry, so you have to have 18? Yeah, that's what the goal The goal is to, to, have to get as many people as, as you can. Because uh, each department isn't going to send 12 men. They're right. So like then, like the, one the in, like the one on 14, then I guess um, Walden, Hardwick? Cabot? No, I don't. I don't think Cabot. Uh, it was. It was um, Hardwick, Woodbury, East Montpelier, Montpelier, Barry City, okay, Barry Town, and Burland are the ones that were. They were most of the. Some of these departments are called because we actually manually called for a tanker task force, okay, which brought in three other more departments, okay, in the. Uh, so that so with Barry Barry City that's. That's automatic. The dispatcher can, has the authority to do it. In our case, Ty or Toby, as the lead officer, would, or whoever the lead officer is going to be, mm-hmm. would be the one to call for those extra resources. Okay, depending and, on. And that's what happened in Cal's. Right. They, they, they call for the extra resources. Yeah, another even even happened, before you know how serious it is, because it's. We, we can do that when we leave the station, right? We don't need to know uh, how serious it is. Um, but it's good to get the, to everybody on the road. Right. Because it takes so long to get there. Right. So we right. want to get them started. And what early. else happens when you might have thought Walden? Walden might have been called in to cover Woodbury Station. Or Waterbury might have got yeah, called I guess in I thought to cover I... Montpelier oh, Station. That's, that's, uh, right. So that's those are yeah. other scenarios that mm-hmm. take place. Everybody backs up everybody. Sure. Right. You know, yeah. So no one's left empty handed in case something happens in their towns. Right. So that's why you might have heard something about Walden. They might have came down and covered Woodbury in case something happened because Hardwick came out right. to the fire too. So it's it's a mutual aid system that mm-hmm. everybody backs up everybody. Yeah. Which it's great. So it's a ripple system because water So yeah, so you guys you nice. guys have a Facebook page, right? I do. It's not very active. Well it should be. Let me tell you why. Woodbury Facebook page is very active. They post stuff all the time they get a lot of, you know, people making comments, and it really keeps them, pe- keeps them, you know, in the in the public eye. And I think that is really helpful when you're looking for recruits, you're looking for donations, mm-hmm. you're just looking for people to know that you're there and, and all the wonderful things that you do. So I would really encourage you to have somebody, maybe there's some... On the, on the other side of that is you have to be careful for privacy of the person right they don't medical call right they don't yeah. do medical they don't do the medical yeah. calls it's only the like the fire they don't say whose it is yeah, yeah um, it's I, something that has to be watched because but of, there's uh, facebook pages uh, really really uh, good I, and yeah. Yeah. you know they get a lot of people looking at it yeah so i would really encourage you to yeah. beef yeah. that up yeah. i don't even have facebook what do you call it? facebook name Facebook page. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, the only reason I did Facebook years ago was because I was getting a puppy. Oh, and that's the way I could yeah. keep in contact with yeah. the breeder. So the other the other fire department, the other fire too that was the same week, was Woodbury had. Mm-hmm. They went to a Greensboro bed. Oh wow! So Paul Cerruti's crew really should be commended for what they did oh, yeah, in, in a week's time. Uh, they were just 
their, their trucks were stripped on, on all those calls. Right. And they and they, they kept going until the job was done. No, so that's, that's hats off to, yeah, they're, to they're Woodbury. Great. They did a great job. Yeah, yeah. And that was in this last one was during the night. Oh, wow. So they were up all night long. And, uh, yeah, and they were they were tired. Job that they have to go to the next morning. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 Um, I do have another request. When you take minutes, is there any way that the boards can get a copy of the minutes that that you take for the fire department meeting? The board wants you to have them. Yeah. <laughs> now I will tell you, it's not going to be in the next couple of days. It no, I'm just takes just me a while. Just it, I think it would be helpful if we could get copies of the minutes that you take. Um, we don't have a quorum tonight, you don't have a quorum, so there isn't any minutes. I'll probably write up some notes. Um, but other than that, it would be really helpful if we could get, and I used to ask about this quite often years ago, if we could get copies of the minutes and it never happened. Okay, we'll make sure you get that. Are you, uh, did you get the agenda for our board meeting? Mm -mm. Not this tonight. Nope. But in the path? Nope. Okay. We can talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not in the instructions. I have my okay. little black. Yeah. I've asked for it, but yeah. we never got it. I, you haven't asked me for that. No, it was before you. It's before you. It is, I know it's not you. Don't worry. You don't, you don't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just it would be helpful. We'll we'll get it. I do. Yeah. I get my book out every time and check everything that I have. So does it no, go to no, you or does it go to the chairman, chairperson? It, would, it should go to all of us. Okay. Do That's we have all of? The, I don't think we have all of the email addresses. I think you probably do, but I can send it to you. I'll send you everybody's email address. Yeah. Okay. Does Eastmont player want the same thing? Yeah. I'm sure. you, right? I, but I think it could just come to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We would like it to come to all of us. Okay. So it will be the approved minutes of our board. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that, then. Yeah. That right. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. I guess we're done. Yep. Yep. Thank you. No. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Paul. Yep. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Well, leave this down.